Hey everybody, welcome back to Leosophy. Uh, this is the second part in the entomology series. This time we're covering uh, the second of the big five, the hemipterans. And, uh, oh man, where to even start with that? Well, we can, let, let's start actually with the etymology. Just as we talked about how, uh, and incidentally, sorry for not using physical examples. This year has been crazy. Like, it's so unusual. I, I, I see lots of butterflies, but I hardly see any true bugs or beetles. It's weird. It's, it's been a kind of a creepy year for insects. Um, in terms of conservation, it is disturbing. I'm starting to, to believe the hype about all those media stories about uh, uh, disappearances of a lot of the biodiversity of insects this year. Because, yeah, I, I haven't really found any true bugs to use as uh, physical examples for the videos. Same thing with beetles. But anyway, um, true bugs or hemipterans are characterized by a few traits. And let's start with the etymology of the name. Hemi means half and terra means wing. All the big five are named after their wings, and most insect orders are named after uh, some quality that their wings have that set them apart from the other orders. That being said, so hemiptera have what are called half wings. Now this doesn't mean that they actually have physically half the size of wings that, say, other insects would have. As I mentioned with, uh, with coleoptera, with beetles, all insects except for one of the, the other big families that will be brought up later, they have four wings, if they have wings at all. Fleas would be like an interesting exception to that. They're called aptera, in other words, no wings, for a reason. Uh, interestingly enough, they actually had wings once, and then they evolved to not have them. They're probably the only animal I can think of, uh, at least as in the invertebrate groups, that had fully functional wings and then lost them because it was a disadvantage to be able to fly. But anyway, um, in the case of hemiptera, they have a pair of ordinary wings, similar to coleoptera, how they have their flying wings, the thin, translucent looking wings. And then, instead of those elytra that we previously mentioned uh, for, for coleoptera, they have these leathery other wings that fold over, and this is where the half comes in, leaves an open space. And you can see this diamond shaped open space at the bottom of any true bug um, that's in hemiptera. It's actually more complicated than that. I'll get into that. But if you look at a stink bug, you'll see that little diamond shape where the wings are folded over except for, for that one little patch. If you look at uh, squash bugs, assassin bugs, uh, water bugs, uh, all of the true bugs, you'll notice this on their uh, wings. Additionally, uh, this is another thing to look out for, and it's it's one of the things that kind of bothers people. Whenever I get an insect ID uh photo from someone, which is frequently, the one that people are always for most freaked out with are wheel bugs, which are assassin bugs, and that's because they can bite, and it does hurt a lot, because their saliva has a corrosive effect. Well, the the thing to, to notice that the assassin bugs have that all true bugs have, and this includes even the ones that are going to be a little different that we're going to get into in terms of the wings, all true bugs have sucking piercing mouth parts. It's called a rostrum, and it reminds me of Capri Sun for some reason. Like if you look at a Capri Sun, you'll see that there's a straw glued like to the actual body of the, the pouch. Well, if you look at the mouth of a, any hemipteran, you'll notice it has what's called a rostrum. and it's, It looks like just a straw that's sort of folded down, and then it protrudes out, jabs into whatever it is that they drink, uh, which is usually plants, but there's some exceptions, like the assassin bug I mentioned. Uh, that would be animal, well, invertebrates usually, other invertebrates, so uh, nothing like us. But there's exceptions to even that. Have you ever heard of Chagas syndrome? That's caused by what's called the kissing bug. It's it's a kind of assassin bug only found in South America, so don't worry if you're anywhere else. And it actually preys on the fluids of uh, mammals, including us. And it's called the kissing bug because it uses heat sensors, and so it's sort of drawn to people's mouths. So it takes that rostrum, jabs it in a person's mouth, Sometimes it'll defecate while it's eating, and if the feces gets in a person's open wound after it's done drinking the blood, it causes Chagas syndrome. That's where that comes from, if you've ever heard of it. Um, so, yeah, piercing-sucking mouth parts via a rostrum and folded wings. Now, here's where it gets a little more murky, unfortunately. Uh, when I was actually studying entomology, it, it had been sort of a little controversial. It was a more recent decision 
to fuse, and this was because of genetic evidence, DNA testing, to fuse Homoptera and Hemiptera. And as a result, what that effectively did is it means not all Hemipterans have that wing component that I was mentioning. Some just have big, broad wings. Um, the, the two that are most notable for that, that really people will notice, uh, would be uh, aphids. Uh, aphids, the females don't have wings at all, and when you find a winged uh, male or the rare winged female, which uh, that's a whole other thing. I wrote a cracked article about that. You can find a link to that uh, in one of my other videos. Um, the, the weird alternating generations that aphids have. But uh, they just have ordinary regular wings that almost resemble a fly's, actually. And similarly, cicadas. Cicadas are hemipterans, too. They don't really look anything like stink bugs, but if you look at the, the overall shape face and the vestigial kind of like withered away to just a nub rostrum at the, at the base of their face or the, the full rostrum that you'll see in the juveniles, the ones that don't have wings, you can see an obvious uh, physiological similarity between, say, a leaf hopper, which definitely has the true bug wings, and the piercing sucking mouth part of the rostrum and a cicada, which is going to be a little more divergent from that. So yeah, that's the, it used to be two separate orders. There was Homoptera and Hemiptera, and now they're all under one group, so they're all considered true bugs. Um, another example of a true bug that people are afraid of, with good reason, is uh, the, the water bug, especially the giant water bug. And it's sometimes called the toe biter, for a good reason. And they have a very painful bite, and how they bite is through that rostrum. So those are the two physiological things that you can notice about them. Uh, and another thing that separates them from other orders, um, not, not all orders, but most of the big five actually. In fact, let me think about that for a moment. Yeah, they're actually the only one of the big five that are uh, hemimetabolists. So in other words, they do not undergo any kind of metamorphosis. So a baby stink bug or a baby squash bug or a baby water bug or a baby cicada if you look at them and you compare them to the adult the only difference is the absence of wings and that's that's true for across the board uh, there's no you will never see a juvenile insect a larval or a nymphal when hemimetabolist insects are called nymphs when they're juveniles and they're uh, called larvae when they're holometabolists when they undergo a full metamorphosis um, they never have wings Juvenile insects do not have wings. It's a waste of time. It's a waste of calories. There's a lot that could go wrong during molting, and the whole point of most insects having wings is to find mates, and that's irrelevant when you're a juvenile. So you will not see a juvenile insect with wings, period. That's the only difference between uh, a juvenile squash bug, for example, and the adult. Now, that doesn't mean that they don't change at all. There, there can be some dramatic like color differences, but it's not this dramatic change that you would see, for example, between a grub and a stag beetle, or a caterpillar and a butterfly. It's a very subtle, nuanced... Uh, the way they grow, the way I think of it, and the way I explain it to people is usually, is think of the difference between a juvenile vertebrate, like a human, and an adult. There's not that big of a difference. It's, it's about size and a little bit of shape. Same thing with uh, hemimetabolous insects. Same thing with hemiptera. And you can definitely see that with aphids because it's borderline. Unless they do happen to have wings, it's kind of impossible to really say 100% sure whether you're looking at an adult or a juvenile because they're just, they're just varying sizes. They almost remind me of uh, those Russian nesting dolls. They're just little green bumps with legs, and you can't really tell the difference between the adults and the uh, uh, juveniles. So... Yeah, that, that covers most of Hemiptera. They have piercing-sucking mouth parts that either feed on the fluids within plants. Squash bugs, you can probably guess what they feed on. Um, Leaf-footed bugs, they also, they're herbivorous. They, they basically suck the xylem and phloem out of plants, like plant blood. And then, every now and again, you have the uh, more predatory versions, and they will suck the vital fluids out of animals. And this can be good or bad. Assassin bugs, people are scared of them. I love them. I love having them in my garden because they will suck dry the insects that cause me annoyances. Like, for example, they are one of the few animals I have seen actively kill potato beetle larvae. And they do that by, they take that rostrum and, and it's like watching somebody enjoy a Capri Sun, pretty much. 
And similarly, um, another is the giant water bug. That's that's probably the most dramatic one. That one's all over the internet because it's it is kind of scary looking, and also because uh, the males will um, carry the eggs on their back, and it 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 bothers people with trypophobia, and it's also kind of interesting. It's kind of like the way people talk about seahorses, which that kind of always annoys me. Did you know the male seahorse has the babies? Not really. The the female seahorse lays the eggs in a specialized pouch. It's not that he's giving birth. I don't know why that confuses people. Like, if a rooster sat on an egg and it hatched, does that mean he laid the egg? No. I mean, I've never seen that happen, but if it did happen, you know, you get where I'm going with that? Anyway, sorry if we're getting off topic. Bottom line, Hemiptera, fascinating uh, uh, order. When people talk about bugs, they're usually not using the proper term because a real bug is a member of Hemiptera. So just something interesting also to bear in mind. So just remember those two physiological cues and you should be able to identify Hemiptera and differentiate real bugs from the generic bug that people use for anything with more legs than two or well four. Uh, yeah, that, that about covers it. Uh, like, share, subscribe, and keep asking questions. Bye.